Hey there, I'd like to talk to you about my current campaign. If you could give me a recap of session three without any spoilers, that would be great. Of course, here's a spoiler free recap of session three. In this session, the party experienced a vivid vision from the Donrin orb, giving them a glimpse into something significant about the Donrin clerics. They also had an intense encounter with a rival party, which culminated in a confrontation that left a couple of the rivals unconscious. The session ended with the party uncovering a clue about a temporal anomaly and deciding their next move. It was a session full of intrigue, tension, and new discoveries. Hey, so when was the first encounter with the rival party? Your party first encountered the rival party during the initial mission to retrieve the ornate box from the Donrin ruin in session one. They were hired by a rival employer to get the artifact first, which led to some tense interactions and the eventual confrontation that caused the time displacement. This kicked off the ongoing rivalry and the unfolding of the campaign's core mystery. I mean, pretty cool, right? Welcome to Geek Philosophy, where we love geeky wisdom. If you're new to the channel, I'm Brian, and today we're going to talk about how I use ChatGPT's projects feature to prep and organize and expand my D&D campaign. I'm going to show you how I structure my campaign files, how I talk to ChatGPT like I just did, to have a co-DM, and how I even plan out my sessions while I'm out getting some exercise on my bike. Just a quick heads up, projects are currently only available if you're using the ChatGPT Plus plan, which includes access to ChatGPT4 and all of the other versions that they're testing, but that might change in the near future. It's just what I'm using right now. So there's an important thing to understand up front. If you're using Using just the regular chat, just going in and chatting with ChatGPT, especially on mobile or with voice, you're starting fresh every time. ChatGPT doesn't remember what you talked about yesterday, really. I mean, it has some memory built in, but it won't remember all of the project files that you're working with. And that's why the projects feature is a game changer. It lets you upload your setting notes, your outlines, your post game logs into a project, and then ChatGPT can reference them every time you go back in. So whether I'm sitting at my desk typing away or out riding my bike talking to ChatGPT, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So let me show you how I have everything set up. This is my campaign setting, uh, at least an outline of my campaign setting, and it's a living document. I build this to help you know, organize my thoughts and make sure that I've got a set of rules that I use, you know, at the table from a homebrew perspective, but also mainly just what is my campaign world. So, you know, I have things like the gazetteer of the campaign world, like what are all of the different settlements, cities, regions, countries, that type of stuff. Um, so this is pretty much laid out. You'll see that I don't have a ton of information about every single settlement. Sometimes it's just a series of bullet, uh, bullet points that I use, and those are generally the same type of format for each one. But then as things get expanded uh, and I have more information about something, so for example, Kingdom of Getica, I've got some additional information here, uh, more settlements, uh, I've, because I've been playing with the Guardians of Getica campaign. So I've got more cities and, you know, places that we can highlight. And the idea is to give a framework and then build this out as things go on. So ChatGPT can help me with that. I also have all the factions and societies that I use in the campaign world from the Archaeological Society, which is a big part of uh, the campaign that I'm currently running. All of those different societies that are um, making up the race to find artifacts around the world, the um, Athenaeum, the church, the guild coalition, all of the things that we've got set up for the different uh, factions that the players may either be a part of or experience from NPC's perspective. Then we've got daily life, everything from months and holidays to days of the week, the currency, languages, all that stuff. I have to say, as I'm mentioning all this, this is just what I like to include and what I want to build into my campaign world. You do what you want to do for your campaign world. You might not really want to bother with any of this, and that's completely fine. The idea is that if you're customizing what your campaign setting is, ChatGPT can use that and it will fit what you want for your world. Then I've got things like history and legends. Uh, ancient civilizations is a big one because there is uh, a big part of the current campaign that is dealing with an ancient civilization known as the Donrin Empire. In my campaign, you'll see I've got a lot more detail about that. But then also I've got the timeline. 
there's an element of time travel in my campaign, which is something that can be hard to keep track of. Um, but this is much more straightforward now that I can tag things as when the events happened as I go. Okay, so then it is, like I mentioned, the actual cast of characters and the story. So the party is the main cast. They're the protagonists in our adventure. We've got a rival party, we've got other NPCs, and then we get into sessions. Now this may look like, man, you write all of this for your session notes? Yes and no, I don't actually. This is what it looks like after I've recorded what has happened. And some of this, especially in the first session, it's not a good example because I pre-plan pre a lot in the first session because their choices are going to be based on that. Um, but for other things, like I kind of, you know, make notes of what happened during the game, and I'll tell you how I do that shortly. Uh, and then, you know, we've got other ways of doing things that are more of an outline. So this is actually after I fleshed out the outline with what actually happened during play, because, you know, it never goes according to plan. So I export all of these documents as PDFs. And the reason I do that is because every time I make a change, I want to make sure that the project uh, in ChatGPT has a current version. So these are living documents, but I want to work from a baseline while I'm working on my campaign. So let's get into how that works. So for the setup in ChatGPT, if you've used it at all, you'll notice that when you go to ChatGPT, it's ready when you are, and you can just start chatting about whatever you like. But over on the left, if you're using the plus plan, you will have a series of projects that are available to you. Um, they're not there unless you've created them. So you can click the plus icon, and I'll name this one uh, Assistant DM as just our you know Dungeon Master Assistant and create that project. It's not gonna do much other than create the project and now it will have a little folder that will appear over here. With this, I can actually change the color of the folder so that it stands out if I've got multiple projects going on. So I'll make this one purple. And then uh, I can start chatting and all of the chats related to this will be within that project, which is great. But to really get the most out of this, what I wanna do is add those files. So all of the files that I've worked on myself as a way of, you know, here's my outline of uh, the adventure, here's also my campaign uh, world that I'm using, I can add those. So if I click add project files, I can add the files directly. You can also just drag them in, but here's a folder. Okay, so now I've uploaded all the files I wanna work with. The main ones that I'm really concerned with are the campaign setting and the uh, campaign itself, all of the notes that I've got running, but I also uploaded a template for the session and the SRD, the one that was recently released by Wizards of the Coast, the one that's in Creative Commons now that is available free for everybody to use uh, under the Creative Commons license, so that's great. So now I've uploaded all these things. All right, so let's use it a little bit. So I've got the session outline template. Please recap session four in the session outline template I included in the project files. So what this will show you is what it really looks like whenever I plan a session because I use that template to generate it. I would use the one that I'm working on next, but I don't want my players to see that outline yet because, you know, spoilers. So here is session four in the session outline template. And so it gives me a title, it gives me the recap, it gives me uh, part one of what my outline was. I name all these things uh, just to kind of have a, a cue for myself as I'm going through. It gives me any key NPCs that I've got, it gives me events that are there, um, special things that might pop up like loot. Um, we've got uh, part two of the template coming in, this is great. We've got a skill challenge that I use during the game. Uh, it was an optional one and I ended up using it. So this puts this in because it was something that actually happened during that uh, session. And what's cool about this is it keeps it consistent. It keeps my notes and the format of things pretty consistent. So I get used to at a glance looking at things as I go. Pretty good, right? So like this is the type, this is basically how I would run the adventure by the way. So this type of format. Um, 
I could use any notes that I've put together so far and say, hey, put this in that format for me. I could also say something like, um, tell me who the rival party members were that showed up in the session. And so now there's a rival party that the group is dealing with that they have really encountered during the first session and they've been sort of a thorn in their side um, throughout all of the sessions so far. And so this gives me the, you know, information about who's there. So present at the beginning of the session, I've got Alira Voss, I've got Nesa Vale, I've also got who they are, what what their bullet points about what's going on. Um, I also have those that are referenced but not in the beginning of the session, they're present later because they turned out to be undead. They were risen after the party went to go find them. So you see all of the things that were, um, you know, in the adventure, it can tell me about them in a way that makes sense. This is a big deal, especially as your campaign gets longer and you want to go back and tie up loose plot threads or bring back characters that might be interesting to uh, reintroduce to the group. Um, now let's ask a question like, you know, um, what was the next step for the party? So this was session four. So if I was trying to think through, oh, what were they doing at that time? And what the choice did they make yet? Uh, you know, after this whole session, well, here we go. At the end of the session, the party had just de defeated a group of undead, including the reanimated Relin, Suri, and the Donran Guard. And they used Lehman's tiny hut spell to take refuge there and stay for the night. So the next part step for the party was to proceed to the city of Novabria at dawn. Now, here's the thing. It was the immediate goal after resting, but they are using or it's using the information from the session notes that I had in session five, because at this point we already know what was going on. But I also, they had the option because I put this in to return to the camp. They chose not to do that. My point is I can talk to ChatGPT as if it's my assistant DM. I can find out information. I can organize my thoughts and I can really help craft an adventure that feels as if it's organic and it's put together and I'm not using formulated things. I mean, I could, if I said something like create a encounter or combat encounter that's appropriate for the group, they are level three now. Because I uploaded the information from the SRD, it does have all the CR information. So it could do this. And here's uh, an encounter where the title and everything, I might not like this, but remember, it knows what my campaign setting is. So when it's doing this, it's using that context. It knows what the surrounding area is like because I told it what that is. So an environmental hazard type, hybrid type combat situation, uh, estimated difficulty, medium to hard, balance for four characters at third level, which is what I have. Um, I've got the terrain, I've got the hazard, I've got a frozen white, I've got skeletal hounds, I've got shivering dead. It's like, here are the things. I've got how many of them, their AC, their hit points, and then their attacks. This is the basics of what I would need to run a quick encounter. So you can see how this is useful. Now, I'm probably not gonna use this one, but you definitely could if you needed to do something quick. This is great to have on the fly. I keep my iPad and I use that for my notes during my session behind my DM screen. So if there was something that popped up and I needed a random encounter, I could get one that fits the the whole theme of the adventure because I've already told it what the theme of the adventure is. I told it what the campaign setting is. So I can limit things down, use things directly from the SRD as far as the notes and the mechanics that I need. And here we go. I've got it ready to go. I can run it on the fly. Could you do this with your books? Absolutely. Could you do this without ChatGPT? Absolutely. This just makes it faster. Now that's just me working at the desk, but when I'm out walking or riding my bike, I can use the voice integration on the ChatGPT mobile app to plan for my upcoming sessions or to recap the ones I just had. And that's my favorite thing to do because when I go to ride my bike or take a walk, I can ask ChatGPT to ask me questions about how the session went. How did it turn out? based on the outline that I have. So that lets me have a conversation and really explain all the things that took place in the session because 
You all know that when you plan a session, it never runs the same way when it hits your players. They do unexpected things, and that's a good thing. We want them to do that. So I take the outline, I upload it, then I ask ChatGPT to ask me questions, and I respond with all the cool things that happened in the session. I can even ask ChatGPT to create a PDF of those notes, and then I can download that later and upload it back into the project. So I don't have to keep so many chats open. You can, personal preference. I also can use the same type of conversation method to plan the next session. After I finish recapping what happened, ChatGPT might even recommend some suggestions, but I don't have to take them, but it does get me thinking about things. Here's how the game can move going forward, and I can create my new outline of notes for the next session. I don't use it as a replacement DM. I use it to help me keep up with the story that we're already telling and the game that we're already playing. And guess what? Since Wizards of the Coast recently released that 2024 version of the rules under the Creative Commons, I can actually upload the systems reference document and then have all the basic rules at my fingertips too. That's part of the project file. So once I started working this way, it really reduced my session prep time. Again, I'm still the one coming up with my ideas. I'm just asking for help with organization. But how about you? Do you use any AI tools for your game? And if you do, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you're doing and maybe I can apply some of those for my game as well. If you found any of this useful, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on any future content. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll leave you with a little geek philosophy from a different kind of AI. Well, I was born yesterday. Cheers.